Hey guys, let's take a look at a chapter one test review together. Ready? I've got 20 questions. We're going to go through each one. First question, write an algebraic expression for four times x to the second power plus the difference of five and x. So first off, four times x to the second power should look like four x and then the exponent of two. So I know the second option or the third option would be best plus the difference, difference means subtraction, of 5 and x. It looks like the first one says 5 plus x, that's the sum of 5 and x, but the last one, 5 minus x, looks good because that's showing, showing that we're adding the difference, the difference of 5 and x being 5 minus x. Next one, write a verbal expression for 5y minus 7. So let's take a look. First one, 5 times y increased by 7, that would look like 5y plus 7. 7 less than 5 times y? Well, than is a flipping word, and less means subtract. So it would look like 5y, 5 times y, minus 7. Hey, that's what I want. I'm going to check it off. Let me check the next one. The product of 5 and y, that's good because it means multiplication, plus 7. Nope. And the last one, the sum of 5 and y, that would look like 5 plus y, decreased by 7. No. Next one, translate five times the sum. Anytime we see five times the sum, we should be looking for parentheses. Five times the sum of x and three is decreased by seven. So when it says five times the sum of x and three, that's the entire quantity. So when I'm looking at this, it should read five times the sum, five times x plus three, and then decreased by seven, which means minus seven. Evaluate, let's take a look. So six minus three squared times seven plus two. I have to make sure I do my order of operations. So parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division, and then addition and subtraction. Here I see I have parentheses, but there's nothing to do inside them. So really the first thing I should do is my exponent. So this becomes six minus three squared, which is nine. Nine times seven is 63. Okay, I have to make sure I now do my multiplication and division. So I'm gonna do nine times seven. Nine times seven, like I said, is 63. Then we go ahead and we add and subtract in order from left to right. 6 minus 63, let's see, is negative 57. And negative 57 plus 2 would get me negative 55. And so that should be my answer. Awesome. Next one. Let's take a look. Okay, another evaluating problem. So here we have 8 plus 2 times five minus four squared plus 15 divided by three plus two. So what the order of operations tells us we have to do is in parentheses. Now I have to ask myself, do I do five minus four or four squared first? Well, exponents come first in the order of operations. So this would look like eight plus two times five minus 16, four squared is 16, because to square something means to multiply it by itself, plus 15 divided by three plus two. Um, I'm still working with my parentheses, so this would then look like 8 plus 2 times 5 minus 16 is negative 11 plus 15 divided by 3 plus 2. My exponents are gone. Now I do my multiplication and division in order from left to right. So this would be 8. 2 times negative 11 is negative 22. Now I can also do this division at the same time. Plus 15 divided by 3 is 5 and then bring down plus 2. Last step, we add and subtract in order from left to right. So first I would do 8 minus 22, which is negative 14, plus 5 plus 2. Negative 14 plus 5 is negative 9, and negative 9 plus 2 is negative 7. Excellent. Another evaluating problem, we are simplifying this expression. So here I have 50 minus 3 times 4 plus 16 divided by 2 to the third power. So I know parentheses are first. Inside my parentheses, um, I have to also do the order of operations. Adding, dividing, exponent. Which one comes first? Exponent. So this is now 50 minus 3 times 4 plus 16 divided by 2 to the third power means 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is Eight. Okay, I still have to simplify what's in my parentheses. This, this is 50 minus 3 times. I know I need to do division before I ever add, so this would look like 4 plus 2 
I'm going to finish up what's in the parentheses. 4 plus 2 is 6. Now I would ask myself, hey, what do I do next? The subtracting or the multiplying? We definitely have to do our multiplication first. So this is now 50 minus 18, and 50 minus 18 is 32. And that would be my answer. Awesome. One more evaluating problem. This time we have to plug the numbers in for the variables. So this looks like a to the third plus 4bc minus c squared. a is negative 1, so negative 1 to the third power, plus 4 times b, which is 4, times c, which is negative 6, minus negative 6 squared. Now, I don't have anything inside my grouping symbols. I just have to do my exponents. So negative 1 to the third power. Well, think about it. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1 times another negative 1 is just negative 1. So that's negative 1 plus 4 times 4 times negative 6 minus negative 6 squared. Negative 6 times negative 6 is a positive 36. So I'm subtracting that positive 36. I'm going to go ahead and do my multiplying. So this is now negative 1. 4 times 4 is 16 times a negative 6 is negative 96. Bring down the minus 36. Negative 1 minus 96 is negative 97. Negative 97 minus 36. Now remember when you're doing this, you're really thinking like you can add them. 97 plus 36, 3, carry, end up getting 133. And because they're negative, my answer would be negative, whoops, 133. Excellent. Which equation represents the multiplicative identity? Multiplicative identity says to you, hey, when you multiply by this number, you get the answer identical to itself. That's what a multiplicative identity is. Which one of those answer choices do you see multiplying by 1 to get itself? It would be 5 times 1 equals 5. That's what the multiplicative identity is, that when you multiply by 1, the answer is identical. Additive inverse. So additive inverse is about opposite signs. Opposite signs, when you add them up, get zero. Like 3 plus negative 3 is zero. In this case, the answer choice that shows the additive inverse would be 7 plus a negative 7. Next one, simplify. So I have 5x to the second plus 6x to the third minus 2x to the second, which is really just a combining like terms practice problem. You can only combine like terms if they have the same variables with the same exponents. So here I can combine 5x squared minus 2x squared and get positive 3x squared plus 6x to the third. Notice 6x to the third had nothing to combine with, and that would be my answer. Next question, number um, 11. Simplify the expression. So this is a little distributive property. We have negative 4 times 3a plus 4b minus 5a. So now I need to distribute. Negative 4 times 3a is negative 12a. Negative 4 times 4b would be negative 16b. And then negative 4 times negative 5a, a negative times a negative is a positive, and that would give me positive 20a. So I should have, oh, I was like, I think I'm done. No, I'm not done. I need to combine my like terms. Negative 12a plus 20a. Well, negative 12 plus 20 is 8. So that would give me positive 8a minus 16b. So positive 8a minus 16b. All right, let's take a look at this next one. So I'm going to do 3 times 2m plus n minus 2 times 4m minus 7n. Okay. 3 times 2m is 6m. 3 times n is positive 3n. Now I have to distribute the negative 2. Negative 2 times 4m is negative 8m. And then negative 2 times negative 7, a negative times a negative is a positive. That would give me positive 14n. I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms. 6m minus 8m is negative 2m. 3n plus 14n is positive 17 N. So I need the answer negative 2m plus 17n. What is the domain? Domain means the x values. So when I look at each one of these ordered pairs and I say to myself, okay, I need the domain, I'm really just looking at the x values. My x values here are 0, 2, negative 4, negative 6. That is it. The domain is simply about the x values. 
Then if I've asked for the range, the next question, the range is about the y values. So now that's my domain. And now my range, I'm gonna look at each ordered pair and just list the y's. My y's are four, three, five, and three. Now in a range, we don't repeat. So really the range is just four, three, and five. I'm gonna select that answer and we are good. Next one, is the relation a function? So you will know a relation is a function if all of the x values are unique and never repeated. Here I see that my x values are 0, 2, negative 4, negative 6. No repeats, so yes, it is a function. In a mapping, I need to check, are all of my x values used just once? In this case, I see my x value of negative 2 being used twice. So therefore, no, it is not a function. We're going to evaluate a function now using our function notation. So here it says find f of 3 if f of, x, um, if f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 2. All right, so that means wherever I see x in my function, I'm going to replace the x with 3. So this is going to say f of 3 equals 3 squared minus 4 times 3 plus 2. Now, f of 3 is just function notation. I leave that, and now I just do my order of operations. Parentheses, no. Exponents, yes. I do have 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. So that's just 9 minus 4 times 3 plus 2. Order of operations then tells me to do all my multiplying and dividing. So I have this. So this is now 9 minus 12 plus 2. And then last step, I do my adding and subtracting from left to right. 9 minus 12 is negative 3 plus 2. And then final answer, f of 3, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Awesome. Next one, find f of negative 5 if f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 2. So ready, f of negative 5 equals negative 5 squared minus 4 times negative 5 plus 2. So I'm going to keep my function notation f of negative 5. Remember, we have to do the exponents first here. Negative 5 squared. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Minus 4 times negative 5 plus 2. After my exponents, I do any multiplying and dividing. I see I have a multiplication problem. It's negative 4 times negative 5, which is a positive 20 plus 2. And then I can just go ahead and add this up. 25 plus 20 is 45 plus 2, and my final answer would be 47. F of 5 equals 47. Okay, next question. Select all the true statements about the graph of the function. So it does say select two options. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so we can see. Whoops. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. So um, first option says the graph has line symmetry. It does not. I can't put a line down the middle and have it equally split symmetrically, so not. The y-intercept is negative 3. The y-intercept means where it crosses the y-axis. Here I see it's crossing the y-axis, but it's at positive 3, so that's not true. There is a maximum vertex and extrema. No, I can't tell what the maximum point is because this is linear and it's going to extend indefinitely. The x-intercept is 3. Is it crossing the x-axis at positive 3? Definitely is. And the last one, the entire function is decreasing. Well, we do read graphs from left to right, and I see the entire graph is decreasing. So those are both true. Next question, the positive part of this graph. So the positive part of a graph is anything above the x-axis. So this whole area here that I'm kind of hovering over until this point is in the positive region. I notice that it stops being positive at x equals 3. Everything before x equals 3, everything to the left of x equals 3 is positive. Well, every number to the left of 3 are all the numbers that are less than 3. So I would be able to say that the positive region of this graph is all x values that are less than 3. The negative area would be all of the x values that are greater than 3 because all the x values that are greater than 3 have it where the graph is below the x-axis. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck on your test. Bye.